Okay, welcome back, EENG 460. Um, today we're going to look at the load byte and store byte. A lot of what we've been doing is all 32-bit based, you know, loading 32-bit words, uh, writing 32-bit words, uh, operations on. Well, it turns out you might want to read memory, um, you might want to read memory a byte at a time. So we do have some operators or commands that do that, and in particular they're called load byte and store byte. So let's bring in our demo program and uh, discuss that guy. Okay, this is a program. Oops, let's see, let's do that. Uh, did I save that? Yeah. Let's um, uh, look at this program. It demonstrates the use of loading bytes, LB, load byte, and storing bytes, SB. Now, remember, these are reference to the register. So when you say LB, load byte, you're loading a byte into the register. When you say store byte, you're storing a byte from a register to memory. Okay. Now, uh, let's see, comment statements up here. All right, that's good. And then data segment, I just got a couple of silly ones there demo program and then normal termination and then here's my text segment all right what's that guy gonna do well that loads v0 with 4 loads the address of message 0 into a0 and then calls sys call so that just prints out message 0 demo all right so what's down here now right, here's where the program really starts first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load immediate 1001 quad 0 into s0 now hopefully by now you realize that 1001 quad 0 is where the data begins uh, for example, this variable right here, this D up here, is stored at 1001 uh, quad zero. The E is stored at 1001 okay? And now I'm going to put that beginning of my data segment into a register. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue the load byte command. Okay? So what I have to do is I have to give it the base address, which is 1001 quad zero. So I'm giving it a base address, which is a memory location. And then I'm saying offset by this amount. So that takes 1001 quad 0, it adds 0 to it, which gives me a memory location, 1001 quad 0, goes to that memory location, which is 32 bits, picks up the rightmost 8 bits, or no, actually goes to that memory location, which is a byte, and then takes that byte and writes it into the rightmost 8 bits of this 32-bit register. Okay. Then what I do is I say take the same base address, but now offset it by 1. So I take 1001 quad 0, add 1 to it, which will be 1001 0001, which is the next memory location. Uh, read that and load that into the lower 8 bits of T1. Again, T1 is 32 bits. We're just loading it into the lower 8 bits. Then on the next statement, I again say go to the beginning of my data segment, which is 1001 quad 0, add 2 to that, which gives me 1001 0002, go to that memory location read that byte and shove it into the lower 8 bits of T2. And then go to the beginning of the data segment, offset three memory locations, go to that address, get that byte and put it into the lower 8 bits of T3. Now notice when we did load word and store word, we had to work on a four byte boundary, a word, 32 bits. But here I'm actually able to uh, go to a four byte boundary and then access one, two, and three offsets. I can't do that with load word and store word. Okay, so I don't have that restriction here. So what I've effectively done right here, it re is read the first four bytes out of my data segment and put it into T0, T1, T2, and T3. And the first four bytes of my data segment are D, E, M, O. They're going to be the ASCII values of a D, going to be in T0, ASCII value of an E, going to be in T1, ASCII representation of M in T2, ASCII representation of little 0, little O in T3. All right, that's great. So I've just read a bunch of memory byte by byte and put it into registers, lower eight bits of 32-bit registers. Now, can I take the contents of those registers and write them back out to memory? Well, sure I can. That's where the store byte comes in. So now you got to say, well, where do you want to write those registers? And where I'm going to write them is to this location, 1001-0040. Okay, 40 hex is what, 64 decimal? So I am going to write them 64 bytes past the beginning of the data segment. So what I do is I take that base address, which is 64 bytes down into the data segment, and I'm going to load that into S1. Now on the store byte command, that's going to become my base register. So I'm going to say take the contents of S1, which is 1001-0040, add 0 to it, which stays 1001-0040, and then take the lower 8 bits of this 32-bit register T0 and write it to that memory location. 
And then down here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to write out the lower 8 bits of T1, the lower 8 bits of T2, the lower 8 bits of T3. And where are they going to go? They're going to go to 1,001, 40, 1,001, 41, 1,001, 42, 1,001, 43. So this guy right here reads the first four bytes of data segment, brings them into the T0123 register. This guy here takes the values of the T0123 register, the lower 8 bits, and writes it out to four memory locations starting at 1001.0040. All right, let's go ahead and load it and see what happens. File, reinitialize, load file. Let's go to load byte. And there we go. Um, there's my text. Let's go to your data segment. Yeah, data begins at 1001 quad zero. Um, this is 1001 quad zero. This is 1001 zero zero one. 1001 zero zero two. 1001003. Now, what's the ASCII representation of 44? Can anybody answer that? Well, before you freak out, it's kind of a trick question, right? You know, you can look up your ASCII table and you could go figure out 44 and say, oh, that's a capital D. But I already know that because over here it basically prints them out. If they can be printed out, it does. So there you go. 44 is the ASCII representation of D. 65 is the ASCII representation of E. 6D is the ASCII representation of lowercase m. 6F is the ASCII representation of lowercase o. Now I've got a space here. What's the ASCII representation of that? 2,0. Capital P is 5,0, and so forth. Now notice when you get down to here, look at all these guys. Well, at the end of bytes, go back to your, uh, actually if you go to your text file, you'll notice bytes had two carriage returns. And then we had two carriage returns right here. So we're going to have four carriage returns, which can't be printed. They're going to appear as dots. But also, we had an ASCII Z right here, which is going to null terminate this string. So I should have five dots. Do I have five dots? OK, this guy right here is from the fact that demo string is null terminated. This two are from the two carriage returns right here. And the last two are from these two carriage returns right here. And then the next one is in. And there you go. There's your in right there. OK. So yeah, there's the memory of the data segment. Now what we want to do in our program is read the first four locations. And then I want to write them out to where am I going to write them out? I'm going to write them out to 1000 and 10040. So I'm going to write them out to this location right here. But the way you interpret that is what that's telling you is that 1001.0040 to 1003 quad F has nothing but zeros. It's like uh, initialized memory to zero. So once we write them out, we're going to get some values there. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's run the program. OK, so boom, I just did a syscall, which uh, I loaded B0. I loaded uh, A0, and I did syscall, which uh, printed something out. Now I'm going to put 1001 quad zero into S0. And I am going to read byte by byte 8 bits into T0, 1, 2, and 3. Let's go look at T0, 1, 2, and 3. Right now they currently have nothing in it. And if I execute that load byte command, 0, 1, 2, and 3, I believe data memory 44, 65, 6D, and 6F should have been written into those registers. There you go, 44, 65, 6D, and 6F. Now these are 32-bit registers, so really the real value of T0 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 4 hexadecimal. All right, now look at the data segment. There's nothing out here at 1001, 0, 0, 40. But what we're going to do is we're going to write those registers out there. So I put that into S1, and here I use the store byte. I go to that base address, offset 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, one two, zero one two three, and then I write out T zero one two three. Okay, so I'm going to write out the contents of those registers. Where am I going to write them out? I'm going to write them out here. So on this point, I'm going to stay in here and just press F ten. Hey, I just wrote out the contents of the zero register T zero register to uh, memory at one thousand and one zero zero forty. If I hit F ten again, we wrote out another byte. We wrote out the E. I hit it again. We wrote out the M. Hit it again. I wrote out the F the 6F. Now if I go back to my text, I've just stepped over all these guys. And now I write out my normal termination. There you go. And then I, okay, now do I just terminate the program. Notice I'm in the single step mode. If I hit F10 again, 
I am now stopped and I can run the program again if I want. So yeah, load byte basically um, brings memory in a byte at a time to the lower eight bits of the register. Store byte actually takes the contents of the register, the rightmost eight bits, and writes it out to memory. Okay? It ignores the upper 24 bits. All right, that's enough for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.